So our first speaker is going to be Eric Osterman, who's been working very deep into Kubernetes and Helm for the last at least two years. I mean, as long as we've known each other, it's always been in that context. Um, so without further ado, Eric, please come on up. All right, thanks. Uh, my name again is Eric Osterman. Super excited to be back in San Francisco this time to talk about how we have achieved uh, effortless, effortless Helm deployments on Kubernetes. That is, how we can deploy complex service-oriented architectures uh, to Kubernetes with a simple uh, command. So here's what to expect today. Uh, we're going to uh, have a quick background first on what is Helm for those that might not be that familiar with it. Uh, then I'm going to go into Helm Files. Helm Files is a way for us to uh, deploy Helm, uh, Helm releases to your Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to go into why you want it and uh, how to use it and follow that up with a live demo so you can see exactly uh, what that looks like. Uh, code samples uh, for everything will be available on our GitHub. Uh, they're there right now. Uh, and then uh, followed up by a surprise announcement. I wasn't sure that we were going to have this ready for today, uh, but it also totally fills a, a, a need that we need for effortless Helm deployments. And uh, we'll follow that up with a Q&A. Stop me if I'm talking too fast. Uh, I have a habit of doing that. All right, so I am the founder of Cloud Posse. We are a DevOps professional services company. Uh, we've pioneered a process that we like to call sweet ops which is unique in that it's a collaborative form of DevOps that spans companies' uh, uh, boundaries, uh, that enables everyone to work on the same platform to achieve a very uh, nice uh, infrastructure. Uh, everything we do is 100% open source. Uh, so that, uh, what we're talking about today is just really pulling from our library of open source uh, available on our GitHub. So without further ado today, uh, I want to talk a bit about how to effortless, effortlessly deploy apps on Kubernetes. Um, when I talk about an app, what I'm talking about is like your Node.js front end, uh, perhaps like a Flask back end or a Redis database. It can also be all of your uh, backing services. For example, uh, Cube to IAM or KIAM, external DNS, your Nginx ingress controller, your Kubernetes dashboard, Prometheus, uh, Grafana, and the list goes on and on. There's a lot of stuff that we're running on Kubernetes, and we need a way to deploy it all at once. So today, uh, the most common way that uh, companies deploy apps on Kubernetes is using Helm, and it has by far the, the greatest traction. There's a lot of other tools. In fact, even uh, sitting here today, I heard some of these other ones brought up. Uh, there's Casenet, uh, Draft, uh, Scaffold, and many more. Uh, so those are a little bit out of scope for what I'm talking about today. We're focused on Helm. So how many of you today are using Kubernetes? All right, that's pretty good. And how many of you are familiar with Helm? All right, that's awesome. So I don't need to go into too many technical details on what these are, but just so we're on the same page, Helm is a very simple package management tool. If you're familiar with like dpackage or RPM on the command line, that is what Helm is. It lets you deploy an app, for example, MySQL, to your Kubernetes cluster. But unlike all of these other apps, unlike dpackage or RPM, with uh, Helm, you're deploying a complete application architecture to the cluster. So for example, your master and your slaves, uh, your read replicas, or your front end and your back end and any backing services, all of that is achieved with Helm. So Helm gives us a pretty simple you know, declarative interface in the form of your values.yaml. Uh, and then an imperative interface for deploying that to Kubernetes. Basically, your resources uh, are templatized and go out to Kubernetes exactly the way uh, that you want them. So, like I said, there are Helm charts for absolutely everything and has critical mass. Uh, there's over 100 made available by the community, and we ourselves, Cloud Posse, have uh, a, you know, about 30 or so charts that we maintain. Oops. So the biggest problem with Helm is that uh, there's no standard way of using it. And uh, the documentation is pretty sparse on a lot of these charts. Uh, in a, we spend as consultants most of our time figuring out how to integrate and how to deploy Helm charts uh, for our customers. So basically it's left up to you to figure out how to do it. So your standard Helm installation looks something like this. And this is a simple example. Here we're installing the uh, Cloudflare Nginx uh, ingress controller and specifying a bunch of parameters. What I want to point out, though, is that 
Uh, you have dozens of arguments and there's no consistent schema. So basically no consistent configuration format for these. And uh, uh, you have uh, dozens of charts. So maybe 20, 30 services you need to deploy. So if you're just trying to document uh, that in, in your code, uh, in your documentation or with a make file, it, it, it doesn't scale very well. Other problems that I have personally with Helm is umbrella charts. Uh, so an umbrella chart is where you take lots of uh, different charts and you package them under one chart as requirements. So for example, initially you might decide to deploy your uh, front end uh, together with your back end and release that to your uh, cluster. If at a later date you decide that that was a bad idea and you just want to deploy the back end without the front end, you can decouple it. It's just non-trivial. It's not that easy when I would like to just say, uninstall front end. Uh, the other key thing is uh, environment variables. Uh, the way most configuration is done these days is uh, you know, following loosely the 12 factor pattern where we export an environment variable for uh, a given setting. And that's what we can't do uh, out of the box with Helm. So my point is that Helm, uh, as good as it is, is not the end all be all for what we're trying to achieve for deploying apps on Kubernetes easily. I, uh, I like tools like Brew uh, for the Mac, which are very easy to install your app, one command, and it's pre-configured in an opinionated fashion that makes sense for my laptop. I basically want that for my Kubernetes cluster. So um, what I'm going to talk to you now about is how we can fix this. And it's with one simple command, this Helm file sync. And uh, literally, this is all you need to do to deploy you know, 60 or 100 or more services to your cluster in one fell swoop. It's great for bringing up the cluster. It's great for keeping your cluster in sync with uh, your, your, uh, your Git repos that contain the definitions uh, for what, what should be installed. And uh, this is basically how it's been implemented. So uh, the, the name Helm file is kind of a pun on what's existed forever, like a make file or a Jenkins file. And it's just a declarative way uh, to define what you want to have deployed or installed uh, in your cluster. It supports uh, a, the, the configuration file for Helm file is in itself just a Go template. So you can parameterize it. You can use any function in the Sprig library uh, to, to um, customize that template. So what we've achieved with uh, Helm file is this brew-like uh, experience. Also, uh, I want to point out what some of these objectives are. So every time we want to deploy our charts to Kubernetes, we want it to uh, redeploy uh, uh, consistently and uh, uh, predictably so we know exactly what's going out to that cluster. But uh, like a lot of good tools in the, the ecosystem, we want it to be composable. So we want to use Helm together with like Chamber, together with like AWS Vault, together with uh, our CI CD pipeline. So I want something that's compatible with all of that. And this checks off all of those boxes. This is what uh, a operator would be using on the command line. Uh, one common interface is like Helm file diff. If you run this, you're going to see all pending changes uh, that are, uh, that would go out if I ran a sync command. So if you're using Terraform, this is kind of like running a Terraform plan. Uh, just like with a Terraform plan, you see a plus or minus when resources are going to get deleted, you would see that running a Helm file diff. You can also get very specific. You can use the selector. Uh, and that's where I take any label that I've defined with my Helm file. And I can target that specifically when I do a sync or do a diff. And like I said about being composable, with uh, using tools like a Chamber uh, for managing our secrets, we can store those in uh, Amazon's parameter store and then export those as environment variables that then get consumed by Helm file when we run it. So we're just pipelining a lot of commands uh, in true Unix philosophy. Users of Helm file, uh, Gladly is now a proud user of Helm file. Uh, I don't know if that you've made it to production yet with it, but it's coming. Uh, Reddit is using it. Uh, the tool itself is by an engineer, Rob Ball, at Datadog. So I don't know technically if they're using it, but they might be. Uh, and we've deployed it at a handful of our customers, uh, and it's simplified our workflows tremendously. So this here is an example of a Helm file. If you've been working with Helm uh, already in the you know, Kubernetes tools, it looks pretty familiar. Uh, this is a specific schema, so it's exactly like this. Uh, it doesn't change. Uh, you define your repositories, you de define the release names, 
Uh, labels, these are arbitrary. You add whatever labels make sense to your organization. Um, you uh, can parameterize it with uh, these, you know, Go templating. Um, and uh, you can do inline values. So what I like about this is we have one file that describes the entire rollout of an application to your cluster. So you don't have bits and pieces spread out all over the place. Um, so some tips and tricks that we use, uh, we use you know, the interpolation with uh, the environment variables. Uh, this allows us to keep our Helm files as generic as possible and at runtime uh, set some of these values. Um, and you can provide same defaults, um, which are overwritable, or uh, do like uh, gating of features uh, using conditionals. Um, you can, so a Helm file, uh, originally you'd have like 30 releases all composed into one Helm file and that was unmanageable. So now you have the ability to decompose that into separate files, which is cool because now you can uh, have all of those in a directory called helmfile.d and using GitHub controls like code owners, you can specify who's like the subject matter expert on a particular release, and they're required to um, you know, participate in code reviews uh, as such. Um, we suggest using labels for as much as possible. It allows you to be very surgical about what you deploy. And we recommend using inline values in your Helm file, which will make more sense once you start using it. Um, there's another option you can use. Um, also, wait true. This is a very recent uh, addition. But with this, this means that uh, releases by default are deployed uh, asynchronously. It just deploys everything all at once to your cluster. Um, but I like the idea of like a Six Sigma where you, know, you fail fast, so you deploy one at a time, and if it fails, uh, you abort the whole process. And that's what wait true uh, helps you achieve. So Helm file is itself entirely stateless, uh, so that if you're editing your Helm file and removing resources, it doesn't know about that. So it, it's, it's not smart in that sense. It's very uh, primitive tool, just like make. Um, you can uh, very easily delete things from the cluster too. Uh, just call Helm file delete. So uh, beware, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, no, I'm, I'm a professional. <laughs> and uh, the other key thing is when you call Helm file sync, um, what it's doing is it's always applying all the changes every time. It's just calling Helm upgrade. But if there were no pending changes, it's not going to make a difference. The thing is, just be aware um, uh, that that's how it works. So uh, getting started with it is real easy. You just go to uh, the GitHub repo. They have binary releases, uh, and it's very actively uh, updated. Uh, new releases about every couple weeks. Uh, you can also use our geodesic base image. I'll you know, ask me later about that. Um, I'm going to show you now how we use Helm file uh, hands-on on the command line um, in no particular order here, but basically how we leverage multi-stage builds uh, and how we can use it together with uh, CodeFresh for uh, you know, a GitOps workflow and uh, how we use it with Chamber. So multi-stage, this is a pattern we use extensively in everything that we do. Basically, you bundle up your artifacts in all kinds of different images. In this case, we create uh, a public uh, uh, repo that's Helm files. You can go to github.com slash cloud posse slash Helm files. And with every release, we bundle that up as a Docker image artifact. Now we can pull that in to our infrastructure repos uh, it, it, with strict version pinning and uh, manage the life cycle that way. Uh, it's a really uh, clean way that's extremely dry uh, to ship infrastructure code. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, the GitOps workflow here in the next slide, um, but you can also Google uh, another presentation I recently did for unlimited staging environments. Uh, that presentation did not use Helm file, but doing unlimited staging environments on Kubernetes is made even easier with Helm file because that's how we do it uh, these days. So here's uh, the runbook. Uh, here's what I'm going to do right now and show you what it looks like. And uh, I'll follow that up with a um, CI CD demo. Is that uh, readable to everyone? That seems yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, going to first install the wrapper script. Typo. 
So all this did was install a little wrapper script uh, in a user local bin that I can call to run this Docker container to make things easier for me as an uh, operator. So now I'm inside of a Docker shell, prompting me for my SSH key. I don't need it right now, so I'm gonna hit Control C. Can you move the bottom of your window? Yeah, I just realized that thing. All right, so I'm going to uh, get my MFA code in case I need it. I would only do this for demos, of course. So behind the scenes is just calling AWS Vault, giving me a session to AWS, asking me for my SSH key. I don't care. All right, so now that I have an AWS session, I can run all the standard commands like AWS S3 LS. All right, I'm gonna show you how we can see uh, if there's any uh, changes that need to be synchronized uh, to my cluster. So in the Helm file.d directory here, here are all the services that we uh, can uh, deploy to our Kubernetes cluster. Uh, these are all available on our GitHub. I'm gonna run now chamber, chamber exec, cops. So this is gonna pull uh, secrets from our cops namespace uh, in uh, Amazon's SSM parameter store and uh, expose those to uh, Helm file. And I'm gonna target some specific uh, charts that I wanna install. And what I want to install are my defaults. So we have a label in our Helm files called default true. And this lets me target those and call diff. Oh, I forgot to export my Kubernetes uh, <laughs> config file. So uh, cops export cube config. All right, now I can access like the cluster, kubectl, get nodes. There's our cluster. All right, so rerun this command. So behind the scenes, what's going on here is Helm file is executing Helm template to generate the output of all the template, of all, all the rendered Kubernetes resources. And then it queries the Kubernetes cluster for all the resources deployed, and it does basically a diff on those. So here it's compared all of the releases. If there were any changes here, it would have output them. So you can see what's been deployed to the cluster is now strongly consistent with what we have in source control. But I suppose I want to make a change. I can go to helmfile.d and let's look at um, the, let's take the uh, Nginx ingress controller. So in here, here's a real example of what our uh, Helm file configuration looks like for Nginx ingress. We can see we parameterized like the image tag and the replica count. Some, some more things are hard coded, which you know, could very well be parameterized, but aren't. So I'm gonna take this replica count right now and we can see that by default, it's two. So if I export <laughs> replica count to six and I rerun the Helm file diff, now we're gonna see that it picks that up and it detects that change is pending and we know that's what would happen if I ran a Helm file sync, which I will do after this. All right, so now it outputs that resource, it detected a change, and it also highlights very clearly what is changing between the currently deployed version and uh, the version uh, that I wanna deploy. And running Helm file sync, it's just going to now uh, actually call Helm upgrade to deploy that change to the cluster. Well, okay, one other thing to point out, um, it's actually, uh, like I said, it actually iterates over every single release and redeploys it, but because there are no changes, there's nothing going to happen. Uh, this is because Helm file is truly stateless, so it doesn't, it has no knowledge of what the current state is in the cluster. All right, so that might take a little while. Why don't I just go to another window here, gonna make that bigger. And I'm going to show you a CI CD example of how we can use this uh, with Codefresh. Wow, that's a long prompt. Okay. Uh, 
So uh, we have here, um, so all of our infrastructure, we always deploy it as containers, uh, just like you would any app, like an OJS app or a Rails app. We deploy our infrastructure as containers as well. So here uh, we have a geodesic base image, um, but we also inherit from Helm files and our root modules for Terraform. And suppose I want to change now the number of um, uh, pods for the Nginx ingress. I can, uh, for example, uh, do that right here. All right, and uh, I will uh, check out a new branch. Actually, I think I might have been in another branch. So let's check. Mm -hmm. That's odd. <laughs> well, uh, let me just really. <laughs> I did not make the sacrifice. Uh, testing. So, yeah, here's the GitHub repo. You can check that out. And I'm just going to reclone this uh, rather than try and figure out what happened with this. And we edit the doc file, and oh crap, I need to uh, respond with that environment variable back. This here. That. All right, so in the background, what happens here is it's going to kick off uh, a CI CD test for that. What it's really doing is running one of the CodeFresh um, pipelines, which we have here under the CodeFresh directory. And we have two pipelines configured. We have one for running the diff, and we have one for running the sync. The way I implemented these aren't as efficient as they could possibly be, but they serve the purpose. Uh, basically, we initialize some variables. Um, we uh, build the Docker image and we run kubectl config to change our context to the cluster we want to test it against. And then we run chamber exec cops to get those secrets out and basically exactly what you saw in the command line. And I'm going to go over to CodeFresh. And here we see it's kicked off the diff. If you um, view the output of that, you see it's running. It's currently building that Docker image. Hmm. It's going a little slowly right now. Um, Why don't I just uh, continue and I will come back and show you that this worked in a second, uh, just uh, in the interest of everyone's time. All right, cool. All right, so here's where I see it going from here, basically, is that uh, what we desperately need for Kubernetes is a distribution, uh, something like Red Hat, something like SUSE, something uh, that is opinionated and uh, deploys pre-configured Helm charts for a given cluster. Uh, so our distribution is very opinionated. It uh, basically uh, works well with COPS on AWS. I don't anticipate it would work well on bare metal uh, out of the box the way we have it. Uh, but that's why you can just fork it and make it work for yourself. Um, it, it ships, though, with all the essential uh, pieces that I see you need in running a production cluster. Uh, things like KIAM for uh, AWS assumed roles, external DNS uh, for dynamic DNS, Prometheus, Grafana, uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
Oh, sorry. There you go. One more picture. But we are sending out the slides afterwards, so don't worry. Cool. Uh, and we would love your help uh, uh, to contribute to these, add other services that you need. Uh, if we didn't fully parameterize things, it would be awesome. Uh, if you wanted to parameterize them, you did. Uh, we, we accept uh, pull requests every single week and we'll act on it uh, promptly. So yeah, here's the surprise that I really want to talk about. So the topic for tonight is effortless Helm deployments on Kubernetes. And one of the core things that I talked about tonight was that Helm charts are grossly inconsistent and actually not that easy to configure because they're so inconsistent. So what we have done is we've developed a, a declarative mono chart and it's also available uh, on our GitHub. And the idea here is to define a consistent interface that's dumbed down, highly opinionated for deploying the most common kinds of applications. For example, if you have a Node.js app, it listens on port 3000, it needs a couple of environment variables set, well, this is the chart you can use. Out of the box, this chart supports uh, config maps and secrets. Um, in fact, you can even mount uh, uh, fi as files certain parameters in those config maps uh, to the file system. It supports ingress, it supports services, it supports quite a lot actually uh, out of the box. Plus it's highly composable so that you can create an umbrella chart. I know I said I didn't like them, but uh, if you must, this is a way you can do it and you can just compose multiple versions of the mono chart to achieve that. Uh, through our consulting, we've written so many Helm charts and this basically borrows on that experience of what is the most common pattern. I don't anticipate the mono chart being good for deploying apps that you don't control, things where you have no control over the interface of how you configure it, like with environment variables. But in your company, in your organization, where you can say, hey, always use environment variables, always uh, you know, use a single container per pod, uh, this is uh, the kind of uh, chart that would benefit you. Here's what that looks like. Basically, uh, we've distilled the essentials uh, into this structure here. Uh, and we parameterize as much as we think you need to parameterize. Obviously, if we parameterized everything, we'd be back to square one, which are Kubernetes resources that aren't very easy to operate with. Uh, and this is, I think, a good subset of what to support. Uh, check out our documentation. Go to docs.cloudposse.com. Uh, we talk about how to use Helm file. Uh, our own documentation is better than Helm file itself. By the way, we have no affiliation with Helm file. I'm just a big fan of Helm file and, and how to use it. Uh, we have a very active Slack community for uh, people who embrace this form of you know, DevOps. I encourage you to join and check out our Helm files. Also, uh, all of our other tools are available. Uh, our entire tool chain is uh, distributed in a uh, Docker repo called Packages. These are uh, mostly, well, they're all open source, uh, mostly apps written in Go uh, that we use uh, as part of our tool chain. Uh, we have Geodesic, which is our base image that you saw earlier, that shell that I went into. It has all the tools like Terraform, Cops, uh, Helm, Helm file, et cetera. And uh, you, that's the fastest way to get started with this stuff. We also make uh, reference, uh, all our reference architectures available online, like the testing one you saw earlier. You can go to our GitHub to get that. All right, that's it. Uh, it's Q&A. If you have any questions on how to use Helm file or find me afterwards, uh, both are good. All right. <laughs> uh, Max? Hi. Hi. First question you mentioned earlier that with Helm files, they're completely stateless. Yeah. And then if you want to delete a resource, you have to do it manually? Yeah, so uh, if, if you rerun sync, oh, yep. If you rerun sync uh, and you've deleted a resource uh, from the Helm file, it's not going to know to delete that from the cluster. Uh, so if you want to delete that, first delete it using Helm file, then delete it from the Helm file. Uh, in our experience, uh, the way we use Helm file, we typically only add to it and we use selectors to be very, uh, you know, selective about what we install. And the more things you release, the slower your actual Helm sync gets. That is true. Uh, that, that is a problem that we would have now, uh, but that's a problem that I believe can be fixed uh, as time goes on. Uh, so it's still a young project. Uh, I don't know exactly how old it is. It's probably about a year old now. Uh, they're on their 24th release so far. Um, so, yeah, I'd expect more from them. Cool. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Eric. Woo. I'm going to stop for sure. Can I just